everyone. For all my loves, it's Knowledge Butterfly. As always, to you guys out peace, blessings, love, and abundance. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get into this full moon and Pisces energy. Um, uh, oh, I did say I was going to tell you guys a little bit more about Blue Aragonite. So um, I'm going to pull it up on the computer. But I can tell you just offhand, I know that it has. it's very helpful for people who are spiritual healers. So if you do Reiki, Blue Aragonite is perfect for you to carry around. Um, it helps heighten... Um, heighten your um, intuition so when you're working with a client you need to uh, be able to intuitively um, let your hands be guided where they most need um, that healing energy so this is the perfect stone for that the stone ties into your third eye chakra it also ties into your throat chakra and in your heart chakra so um, it's perfect um, when you're trying to balance the trinity within your your third eye chakra, your throat, and your heart so that you are speaking things that are on your heart and then you're envisioning things that are on your heart. You know, it's that's how I see it. And tying it, it helps you and, and, and enhances your ability to communicate to others and with others. Um, and it's also, it comforts you and it helps you empathize with other people. Um, also, what I remember about this stone is it helps with emotional healing. So another thing for anyone who's a spiritual healer, it is very, very, very um, helpful with you helping people who are um, working on and releasing emotional or childhood trauma. It's a great stone for that. And it helps you release your own emotional and childhood trauma. I remember when I first started doing childhood trauma um, work, which is one of the things that's a passion for me, is helping people move past the emotional trauma they went through when they were children. But in order to do that, you have to be honest about the trauma. You can't lie about it to yourself. So... Once you start being honest that this is how things make you feel or you went through a certain situation and you were a child and, you know, you forgive yourself and get rid of the guilt for yourself because you're holding on and carrying that guilt um, that belongs to somebody else. Once you let that go and realize it's not yours to carry, you, you release weight. You lift weight off of you. So this will definitely help you do that and it also helps you communicate with your spirit guides your ancestors and all those things of that nature all right and it helps you stay calm and relaxed when you're doing those communications so you, you don't maybe have any fear or anything it helps you release all of that so blue aragonite and the reason um i actually started utilizing it last night spirit told me that i needed to start utilizing this right now at this very moment because i was i um just did the healing session session for my sis and I slept with this under my pillow um, and this is to help heal um, in my subconscious mind and also to help me tap into and communicate with my spirit and my ancestors and things of that nature um, since I'm tuning into that frequency which is that full moon and Pisces frequency which is that Neptune frequency um, and I just saw a video I did last year I did a full moon and Pisces video last year and it was on August the 26th, 2018. This one is on September the 13th, 2019. Why that's important is because the number 13, all right? So first off, the number nine has to do with transformation. So if we're gonna go by the Gregorian calendar, September represents the ninth month, and the number nine has to do with transformation. Remember, I did a pull, and I pulled the nine of ones. And I pull the moon, which is 18, which is also the number nine. So we have, we do have some strong nine energy in this particular full moon. So it's a lot of transformation going on, guys. It's a lot of endings going on, endings of cycles that no longer serve us. Um, however, September, the word actually means the number seven, Sep. So we also have seven energy tied into it, which is perfect because seven is tied to Neptune. So we have seven and nine energy. And I've actually been seeing a lot of sevens and a, nine, a lot of nines. I've been seeing seven eleven on the clock a lot. Um, and the number seven has to deal with intuition. It has to deal with um, being analytical. It has to deal with um, um, being highly spiritual and highly intuitive. It has to deal with your seventh chakra, your crown chakra, so being connected to the cosmos and the divine mother, the divine feminine energy. Um, so yeah, so that number nine and the number seven are represented for this month. The next set of numbers are number 13. 13 is tied to the divine feminine energy. And why that's so powerful is because the full moon is on Friday. Friday is Venus Day, okay? So it's tied to the divine feminine energy. And the number 13 
in ancient times, it always represented the goddess energy, the divine feminine energy. So this is a very feminine, feminine um, full moon, all right? So this is that time that you pay homage to the divine feminine energy within yourself and the divine feminine energy within others. This is also the time that you reverence and you lift up the divine feminine energy, your mothers, um, your sisters, um, your wives and spouses. If you are a man and you're watching this, even I know, because I've checked the stats, and that um, women are um, mainly magnetized to my channel, and that fits with my first house being in Cancer when I was born. So I'm definitely going to attract more women to, to my channel. And I'm okay with that because I had to go through being that whole angry black woman in order to get to the point that I can connect with my sisters. I had to go through that. The things that we struggle with is an indication of the gifts that you that you have within you. So that's fine. But anywho, pay homage to the divine feminine energy. Pay homage to your ancestors' divine feminine. Like my mother transitioned. So this is a time for me to pay homage to her and my aunts. I had an aunt that recently transitioned and another aunt that transitioned right before my mother. Um, I have a um I have a grandmother that transitioned my mother, my father's mother. Um, her energy was definitely not very kind to us or my mother. Um, however, I had to forgive her for that. So, you know, sending her still sending her unconditional love because that that I'm actually in a in an ace of hearts year, which in cardiology, if you don't know, that means that I'm in a year of the search for unconditional love and finding unconditional love within myself, therefore finding it in others. Anywho, I won't get into that. So yeah, pay homage to that's what that's the the theme I'm trying to tell you guys is to to feed that divine feminine energy and love on that divine feminine energy because that is going to allow you to to get a lot of gifts. You're planting some great seeds, okay? Because um, during this time we're still planting seeds um, in order to reap a harvest from this full moon. So um, also with the number thirteen, I'm gonna do a breakdown on it. But like I said, it's Friday the 13th, so that, that actually magnifies that divine feminine energy, and that magnifies um, the goddess energy, the sacred, the divine sacred feminine energy, and we have to recognize it. And the divine feminine, um, um, the divine sacred feminine energy has to deal with cycles ending and beginning, death and birth, and that ties into Scorpio energy. Um, but it also ties into Pisces because Pisces is the 12th house in the natal chart and the 12th house is an ending, all right? Um, and the other thing I want to point out with that day is 1 plus 3 equals 4 and 4 is bum, 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 the emperor card. I pulled the emperor card and so that's setting foundations. So um, a lot of us have set foundations and that's what this moon is signifying. It's a celebration, y'all. This is a, celebrate, uh, um, a celebratory full moon, all right? Very spiritual. To me, Pisces and Scorpio are uh, two of the most spiritual cards, um, um, signs. So is Cancer. Actually, those three are the most spiritual signs of the Zodiac. And that's because they deal with the mother and the water energy. And water is the most spiritual element to me. One of the most spiritual elements to me. So anyways, um, uh, anything else I want to add with the four? Foundation, building root chakra so manifestation in the root chakra so um, we have the one plus the three the one has to do with leadership and then the three has to deal and, and also new starts and the three has to deal with creativity um and in order to manifest anything into the number four we have to be a, a, a self-starter a self-made person a leader and we have to be creative and in doing that we get the four energy which is uh, a steady and a, a firm foundation all right um and the last thing this is two not 2019 so this is a number three year this is a year of being very creative and coming up with creative ways to make money coming up with um creative ways to do things um and the way to come up with creative ways is being in tune with, with your authentic self and that's why everybody who i know or who i watch for the most part on youtube and things they talk about authenticity and they talk about being your own unique self because your uniqueness is what makes you who you are and and when you start sharing that with the world you are already successful so changing your definition of successful i'm just giving y'all that you are already successful if you are already walking in your true divine path and you're being yourself you're already successful so when you start having that mentality the success starts to um reflect on the outside of you okay so I'm going to read a little bit of 
um, this article that I found. So it says for centuries, Friday the 13th was considered the day of the goddesses. It was the day to recognize and celebrate the divine sacred feminine and the cycles of endings and beginnings, death and birth that she inherently represents. Friday the 13th was in essence a day to celebrate the feminine aspects and souls always present in our lives. It was a day to honor our abilities, ability to create and sustain life. Remember I talk about the number three being creative and sustain life, sustaining life is the number four, and the miracle that surrounds those essential aspects of life and evolution, all right? Um, interest, and, and to me, that ties to the number nine. Interesting, interest, interestingly, interestingly enough, um, Friday is also considered Venus Day. Her beauty and divinity and grace make her archetype of feminine energy. Um, so that is definitely talking about all the things that I was just saying. Um, and I did a video back in March talking about be cognizant of the days that these cycles are falling on these moon cycles, the new moon and the full moon. Definitely. The other cycles are important too. However, the new moon and the full moon, the day that they fall on, that's going to give you an indication of the type of energy you're supposed to be displaying. Friday is a day of love. It's Venus. So you're supposed to be displaying some type of unconditional love to yourself and to others on that day. And in particular, the divine feminine energy. Okay, we know that um, the number 13 um, is also tied to womanhood, um, and that's because women, in, in a healthy woman, you have 13 menstrual cycles a year, and there that is the exact number of moon cycles we have each year, okay, and so that ties into the alignment the woman has with the moon cycles, okay, and um, uh, let's see if they have anything else to add besides what I know. They're talking about how women's bodies have since the beginning of time been connected to the lunar cycles. Um, and if aligned, most women bleed at the full moon, a time of release and endings, and ovulate a few weeks later near the new moon because that's the time of creation, a time of new beginnings. And that actually makes a whole lot of sense. There have been times when I have been out of alignment and um, my cycle started in the new moon um, versus the full moon. And that has to do a lot with your our mentality and our mentality affects and our emotions and that affects um, our cycles as well that's why you have to have your chakras cleared and in balance in order for you to be flowing with the natural cycle of the moon all right which is to ovulate during the new moon and to have your cycle um, or start waning and releasing during the full moon all right so that's our connection to it and so I say all that to say that that's literally what this is about guys this is literally about the divine feminine energy. I keep getting 10, 10 on the clock. And I, um, I know that um, my spirit and ancestors are going to reveal to me why 10, 10 keeps coming to me right now during this cycle. Um, I know what those numbers mean. I know that the number one is new beginnings and the zero represents infinity. Um, me tapping into a lot of potential. And that is the mirroring, mirroring and doubling of that number. So that's a um, powerful energy. However, I know that it's got to be something else to it. But anywho, um... That's really all I want to communicate, guys, with you in this new moon. This new moon is about new, a new cycle. We're starting a new cycle um, within ourselves. Um, and this new cycle is a very transformative cycle. And this cycle is leading up to us getting all the things that we said we wanted, okay? Um, and that's all our dream, hopes and dreams coming true. Aquarius full moon already told us that we have already manifested that so this is getting more and more in line with crystallizing it the emperor is telling us we crystallized it so on a physical scale everything that we've ever wanted is here it's already here we may not see it right now in this very moment but it's already here so you have to claim it right now this is a highly intuitive moon this is a perfect um time to be doing a, a, a cleanse because we're going through a transformation number nine so my sister actually started her cleanse um she's probably gonna do fruits and things like that and i'm doing mainly greens i did get some muscadine grapes i did a video about the benefits of muscadines so check that out um so i'm gonna be doing mainly greens i have kale i have celery i have cu cucumber cucumber as they say in jamaica um i have carrots i have um I also have some purple grapes. Um, I have spirulina. I have kelp powder. Uh, I have moringa. 
So I have a lot of greens. Greens, I'm going to fill my body with greens, and that's because greens flushes out your system and it balances all your chakras and it aligns it if you do not know. Anything green is going to balance all seven of your chakras, period. Um, some, and that, because that's um, alkalizing your body. That's getting it, um, feeding it with alkaline. And that's clearing out mucus and all those things because all those are the types of things that imbalance make an imbalance and you'll notice that people who have imbalances in their chakras right now this the season changing that mutable that mutable um, mutable sign Virgo um, is an indicator of the season changing from summer into fall and that's why I call the mutable signs bipolar that's why we come off as not sticking to anything sometimes that's my Sagittarius Sun not sticking to things and not being disciplined because we got two different seasons we're in the middle of two different seasons and that transition so we're kind of like which way do we go because we can be either one of those things so it's finding a balance within the summer and the fall right now at this time anywho that's a whole nother story so um what was I saying all that? Say, see how I uh, threw myself off? So yeah, it's about purging, guys. It's about cleansing. It's about that transformative number nine energy, um, which is the new, the moon card, the Pisces card, the number 18. It is, um, the cycles are always changing and flowing. And right now our cycle is a cleansing and a purging. So I'm doing greens for that and the balancing of the chakras. That's what I was saying, all right? Um, and then also paying homage to the divine feminine. So we need to be purging things because we are dealing with um, karmic cycles, um, the law of cause and effect, uh, which a lot of us are getting out of because, like I said, we're becoming our own Saturn. And when you become your own Saturn, you are no longer uh, really dealing with the law of cause and effect because you're disciplining yourself. So you're not putting out anything to even really fucking have to have quote unquote negative karma for it. anything that's coming to you is because it's more on the positive end. And when you get to the point where you're vibrating so high that you're um, constantly getting what people call blessings, which is what the spread is sh um, showing you, then you are no longer, you're kind of like in the law three now, which is what I call the charm ones. Shout out to, um, what's that show? Is it called Charm Ones? With um, Holly Marie Combs and Shannon Doherty and somebody else. Oh, um, Alyssa Milana, uh, the chart ones, and they did a reboot on that. You'll notice how they rebooting a lot of things because we, we went through a, a, a cycle, a cycle ended. So now they rebooting the, the same shit that we've already seen before in the, um, um, time and time again. But they're rebooting a lot of things. You'll see that a lot of witchcraft and a lot of all that's coming out because that divine feminine energy is rising. And since that divine feminine energy is rising, they want to distract us with these TV shows. But I can watch it and I can find... Um, it actually get, puts a, a light bulb inside of me and I start doing things in alignment with that. But that's a whole nother story, guys. So, yes, get on your transformation. You, it's probably best for you to start doing a cleanse right now. Start cleaning out your body. Um, what I learned from going to the universe is conspiring, too, um, is that um, Brother Blue Pill was talking about he went to a retreat in Mount Shasta some years back because he wanted to see the blood moon. Um, the eclipse, the great American eclipse. That's what he wanted to see. And he was in California. And I was in Jamaica at that time, actually. So I wasn't even here to even see it. I saw people posting pictures. And um, he was talking about how the um, indigenous there were talking about the sacredness of sitting in a position for nine hours and that being a sacrifice. Because we always think of sacrifices as you kill an animal um, type of shit. But sacrifice is you giving up something in order to gain some, something that's even better for yourself. So when you let go of some, a situation that no, no longer serves you, you are sacrificing something. All right, You are sacrificing something in order to gain something else. And so when you're doing a fast and you're sacrificing, constantly feeding your face, you're sacrificing the body, the physical body, to gain something spiritually. Therefore, you're actually gaining something physical. All right, if that makes sense to you. So that's why the fast is very, very important right now. Um, as well as um, paying homage to the divine feminine energy all week. Shout out divine feminine energy. Make posts on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter about something beautiful about that divine feminine energy, whether it be your mother, your sister, your wife, your your cousin, or whoever it may be, your grandmother. 
just send some love and energy to it and also um take care of your own divine feminine energy for my men that means pampering yourself that means take soaking in a bathtub doing a sea salt scrub bath that means um going and maybe go get a pedicure do do something that's quote-unquote feminine all right so feed into that divine feminine energy beauty venus feed into that energy um and that way you are um actually planting the seed for that divine feminine energy so i'm going to end the video on that note guys if you are new to my channel um please um please feel free to come back and visit all right or you can subscribe to my channel so you can um turn on the notifications and be notified when i post videos as well as um guys you can follow me on my social media accounts i have two instagram pages one for this channel and one for my my business hill soul i am an energy healer um and i also have a facebook page for hill soul soon to come i mean not hill soul see because soon to come one for hill soul I have a um, Facebook page for Knowledge Butterfly, but soon to come, Heal Soul as well, all right? And also, if you uh, want to get a consultation with me um, to, so we can start working on your chakras and balancing those and get, getting them in alignment, um, you can send me an email. Um, I have my Gmail also in the description box. But I'm going to end the video on that note, guys. I appreciate you for tuning in because I think I'm going to do one more video, and that's dealing with the numbers, all right, for your... Um, my numerology lovers and seekers, knowledge seekers. I'm going to do a video on that. So appreciate you guys for tuning in. Peace.